Hey guys, Sean here and welcome to the F1 Word. Now, Liberty Media have been in charge of Formula 1 for just over a year now, yet people are still massively unsure about them and divided as to whether they are good or not for the sport. In fact, over the last few weeks and months, there have been a fair few comments on my videos from fans who either think they are bad for the sport, think they're doing an okay job so far, or are really, really concerned and unsure about F1's future under their management. There is no doubt that over the last 12 months they have made some good calls, but equally they've made some bad ones as well. There is also no doubt they're making all the right noises regarding the future of Formula 1. However, with fans divided and far from sold, how has Liberty Media's first year in F1 gone and what can we expect in the future? Let's kick off with some positivity then, and that is that Formula One's social media influence is growing rapidly and FOM recently released the figures to back it up. They're claiming that F1 has become the fastest growing sports brand on social media with an increase of 11.9 million followers, which sees an increase of 54.9% overall from 2016's numbers. Obviously, the sceptic in me, and I'm sure you're already screaming it, whilst there is clear growth there, taking a sport that had very little interest in social media under its previous management to a big increase is always going to push Formula 1 right up there as a fast grower. And those figures were always going to inflate under Liberty Media because that was one of their top priorities when they took over in Formula 1. Either way, though, it is still massively promising and will help to engage a younger fan base, which is important for the future of Formula One. And add to that that TV viewerships increased by 6.2%, and that's despite a big move behind the paywall in some countries, the future maybe looks a little bit brighter than we are led to believe. Events such as F1 Live in London were a huge hit with fans who turned out in big numbers, to be fair. And that's despite the short notice I went. And I think I found out about 6.30 the night before. So it was a mad rush the next day, but we got there and fans turned out and that was great. And if you're looking at things like that, even the big driver announcements at the US Grand Prix could be seen as a positive. I mean, they divided fans and they were massively cringy on one hand. And let's be honest, even the drivers looked like they wanted the ground to open up and swallow them whole. But at least Liberty are trying new things out. They've spoken about their aim to take F1 back to the fans and improve the show, but they need to head back to the drawing board and really come up with better ideas than big announcements like that because it's not going to work. It's, it might be great for an American market, and that is an area that Liberty Media really need to tap into, and I, I completely understand that, but that's not something that all fans are going to love. So back to the drawing board for that one, but keep trying because it's a positive. We've had too many years in Formula One where we've had management that don't want to try out new things, so keep going. You never know. They, they, they might get something right. Some more, some more F1 live in London or wherever in the world, and they've already committed to that, so the future is looking a little bit brighter for the fans in that respect at least. On the technical side, though, they are trying to come up with a set of rules that teams and fans alike are happy with, although that is going to be very, very tough to please everybody. Obviously, Liberty will have their say on the rules, but at the end of the day, it will be the FIA that has to sign off on them and will ultimately set those rules. So they've already said that return to V8s or V10s is not going to happen as much as we would love to see them back. It is not going to happen. But at least they are trying to come up with ways to make the engines louder, more powerful, less complicated, and obviously then in turn cheaper. Sticking with that, they are also keen to cut costs and close the field up with a fairer distribution of prize money and of the cash that is already in the sport. So whilst they are looking at ways to improve the show off the track, they're also trying to prioritise the show on it. However, with all of that in mind, there are negatives. Whilst talking the talk, Liberty have shown, for me, a tendency to focus on things that just don't really matter. And it all kind of feels like an attempt to hide the real issues and the obvious bickering that is currently going on behind the scenes. You know, you've got teams and manufacturers that are unhappy about the proposed changes in 2021. So that's all getting a little bit ugly and being pushed into the public eye a little bit. So Liberty Media almost looked like they try and switch focus a little bit away from that. And at the end of 2017, of course, they launched a new F1 logo amidst huge criticism. And from their point of view, it kind of worked. For a few days, at least, people have pushed the idea of 2021, Ferrari's quit threat and the snooze fest that was Abu Dhabi to the back of their minds. On the logo, okay, Bernie still owns the rights to the old logo and so in a business sense and in many respects, it makes perfect sense to come up with their own. However, could Liberty really not find the money to either, I don't know, A, buy the logo from Bernie or B, hire someone to do a damn sight better job of designing the new one? That being said, and, and to be perfectly fair, I have kind of warmed to the new logo and a lot of people seem to have kind of almost gone over that in a way, but many of us will agree that it will never ever top the clever old one. Liberty then moved on to the topic of grid girls and whether or not they should remain in the sport. And whilst I understand the reasoning behind what Ross Braun has said and his aim to, quote, respect all parties, 
Even Liberty frontman Chase Carey said it wasn't really up there on top of the list of his priorities. The thing is, some of the Grid girls were interviewed, I think it was by Radio 5 Live, I think, don't quote me on that, but they were interviewed and asked their opinions on the matter, to which they said there wasn't an issue. You know, they didn't feel objectified. They were paid to go to every Grand Prix and stand next to these beautiful cars. And to me, although I understand the argument for and against, so long as they themselves are happy and completely comfortable, I don't really see what the issue is. And whether you think grid girls should be a part of F1 or not, the fact is there isn't enough of a female presence around the sport and that needs to change. The point I'm kind of making is there are bigger issues in Formula One than logos and grid girls. Before I look at my opinions on Liberty Media and their first year in the sport, I wanted to bring up a point that I see as both a negative and a positive, and that is Liberty Media's dealing with some of the established teams, most notably, of course, Ferrari. The Scuderia are massively important to F1 and losing them will be detrimental to the sport and its image. So upsetting them and driving them away is going to cause Liberty more problems than it could potentially solve. However, leaving F1 would also be detrimental to Ferrari and their image. So as I've said numerous times before, they, they won't leave the sport. It will all get sorted. Even if Liberty Media can't come to an agreement with them and Ferrari are halfway out the door, the FIA are going to grab them by the scruff of the neck, pull them back in and sort it. The reason I say there's a positive side to that, though, is that Liberty Media are comfortable going toe-to-toe with the long-established teams and trying to force them to look at the bigger picture rather than just themselves. Now, that is going to help them in negotiations as a lot of the smaller teams are going to be on board with Liberty's promises of, I guess you could say, greater riches. So they're more likely to fight Liberty's corner. Although, flip that over, if Ferrari and Mercedes are still around, their influence is going to be a damn sight bigger than probably all of those teams put together but it will also help to endear Liberty to a huge number of fans. Fans who will see that they're trying to sort the sport out for the better and for the long term. One thing is for sure though, the next few months will be very, very interesting around that negotiating table. And don't be surprised if we keep hearing stories of the little changes that are being pushed through to distract us from what is really happening. So let's jump to it then. Have Liberty done enough? And what are my thoughts on their first year at F1's, let's say, tricky helm? While I don't think they have done enough, I also don't think they've had a particularly bad year. You know, as I've said a few times, they've tried out new things and they've put the feelers out there for future changes and negotiations. And although F1 wasn't broken when they took over, it was damaged and massively stuck in the past. So whatever their aims are, it's all going to take time. Of course, they could have done a damn sight more, but they have spent a lot of time trying to keep everyone in and around the sport happy. And the problem is that's impossible. You've got 10 teams, all with varying ideas of what they want for and from the sport, as well as wanting what is best for their business and brand. Completely understandable. Add to that any new potential manufacturers or teams demanding change if they're going to join Formula One. But a lot of those changes are changes that, let's say, the fans don't want. As an example on that front, new teams want cheap, hybrid, road-relevant cars, whereas fans want power, noise and drama. So just on those three points, you know, you look at the existing teams, potential new teams and the fans, it just isn't possible for Liberty to appease everyone as hard as they're going to try to. In all though, I like the words that Liberty come out with and I think they have the potential to take the sport in the right direction. However, they need to back that up and quickly. They are massively concerned about taking the sport to new young fans and entice more sponsors in and that's great. That's what the sport needs. Sustainability. But The most important thing for them is surely the racing itself and in turn making the sport more of an attractive prospect to new fans and new sponsors. And equally as importantly, and it is just as important, keeping long-term fans and long-term sponsors interested. People don't flock to circuits to watch big bands perform or see drivers announced in dramatic ways or the latest big name celebrities on the grid. They just don't. And although they are a bonus, the fact is fans go to watch some of the best drivers in the world take on some of the best circuits in the world wheel to wheel at 200 miles an hour and at the end of the day if the racing is close dramatic exciting all other pieces of the puzzle will fall into place naturally as ever though they are just my thoughts what are your thoughts on liberty's first year in formula one and what would you like to see them change in the future let me know in the comment section down below I will be back soon with more content as ever and make sure you join us tomorrow night at 7 p.m uk time for our 10k q a special And I will take this opportunity and I'll say it loads tomorrow night to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody for helping us reach that 10k mark. It really is beyond anything I ever imagined was possible. So thank you once again. And if you can't make the stream tomorrow night, then pop your question for the 10k Q&A below this video. Just start your question with 10k so they're easy for me to spot and I will try and answer them in that stream. 
In the meantime, though, don't forget to follow me on social media. Links to Twitter, Facebook, and to Discord are all in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.